This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad. And welcome to Rain, the day after you've washed your car. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I painted my war glaive, which is an extra specially angry packed lunch boy that is kind of shaped like a robot and uh, nerds play with them, little games on tabletops. I'm not gonna lie, I ran a bit out of time this week. So this video is being recorded very late at night and I can't make as much noise as I usually would. And for that, I would like you to click the like, possibly click the subscribe button while you're in that general area. And I guess since you're down there, you might as well leave some words in the little square box that YouTube allows you to leave some words in. So I'm gonna start out by painting the armor on this robot man dude thing. And I'm gonna end up wanting red for most of the armor, but there is a little bit of uh, some crazy masking that I'm gonna have to do for the caution stripe things that are on the top of him. But for now, let's just concentrate on getting this red armor to look as crisp and super awesome red that actually sticks to the model. If you remember from one of my previous videos, I was using a red ink that was a calligraphy ink and it most certainly did not stick. No matter what I did, I could not get it to stick to the model. I think I figured out how to get a really good red. Um, it's not as bright, but it's pretty close. So after I'd got the entire body of this massive robot space lunchbox dude painted in black, I then dry brushed him with silver. This is to make him look more like a robot. I'm then going to mix up some oil wash and I'm going to use that because of its lovely flowing capabilities to go into all the recesses and cracks and crevices on the model. Now for that awesome red that I was talking about. I take these two contrasts and I mix them together at about two parts of the deep red to one part of the orangey color. And this is going to give you a really, really bright red. And as long as you've got quite a white base, it's going to go down super bright red. The black areas are going to stay slightly desaturated because that's what black does. But we'll come back to that and we'll use Flesh Terror's red for the shadows on this red. This gives it a super good, high, saturated, awesome, I like it. Let's just say I've found my favorite recipe for doing red almonds now. Once that had all dried, I needed to start masking off certain areas. So in order to prepare this, I'm going to spray a matte varnish over the top of this bonnet for this dude. I used this masking tape. I have some of this stuff on my online store. If you look at groundeffected.com, you will be able to see it. It's just from a company called Meng and it works. It's masking tape. You could use any other masking tape, but I have some of this stuff. So I decided to use it out on this model. I place it in roughly the areas that I want it to be in and kind of move it till it's as straight as I can get it by my eye and then I stick it down making sure to press really really well on all the edges you don't want any edge sneaking a little bit of paint underneath it because you forgot to press it down so make sure you press it down really well I then used a Vallejo game ink yellow and I painted this over the top of the parts that I wanted to be yellow in order to shade those I took Yandan yellow and I sprayed that in the shaded areas this gives it an orangey shade to the yellow I then sealed that in with a matte lacquer and only used this because it was so much quicker than filling my airbrush and cleaning it out again. I used the hairdryer to dry that off and once that was fully dried, I took bigger pieces of masking tape and masked off all the yellow areas. This is so that I can paint the black over the top of this. The black I had to do in a couple of stages because I was a little bit worried about it seeping underneath and maybe leaking between the masking stages at this point. We're quite deep into a masking effort on this model, so I don't want to do anything that's going to mean I need to fix because screw going back after this. I then unmask everything and I did notice that a little bit of the section on the black needed a touch up, which I touched up with a brush. I then went in and I started all the trimming on the model. There is silver trim on the model in the picture on the box, so I gave him silver trim. I'm not really sure why this one's red and the other one's blue. Maybe this one's more angry. Maybe he carries the curries and the other guy carries the waters. I'm not really sure, but this guy's red and the other guy's blue. I think you're supposed to paint two of the same kind, but I have one of each kind. One of each is sometimes better than two of one. 
I then placed all the transfers all over the model. Again, I have no idea what these transfers mean, why they're there. I just stick them on according to how the box looks. That way, in my mind, I think I'm making this model from the box. I then gave this guy's metal body a little bit of a different colored tone. I used a bit of a greenish blue shade just so that it had a little bit of that color bouncing off of the base. If you remember in a previous video, I painted a super awesome green base and this is the base for this robot man. I continued using the silver for the trim all over the other armored parts that are going to be stuck back onto the robot boy. I then stuck these parts onto the robot boy making sure to hold them so they stayed in place. I then took copper from Monument Hobbies and I dry brushed that over certain parts that I wanted to have a slightly different tone to them. And I went back to some more trimming because I got bored of trimming earlier. I then glued on a lot more of the armor pieces to make sure that everything was looking great. And at this point, I can start adding a bit more details. On the eyes, I painted white over the lens things. And then I used a technical paint over the top of that to give them a nice green glow. Once it's had dried, I then stuck that in place and started working on the weapons. This guy's got a chainsaw on the side of his hand arm thing and I basically wanted to give this a little bit more detail. Instead of just being a flat plain color, I'm going to give it the same kind of, ch what is it called? Caution marks that it has on the bonnet of this dude. So I'm going to mask those out, but instead of airbrushing it, I'm just going to paint it by hand. Be super careful not to use too much of a loaded brush here, because if you do, it's definitely going to leak between the masking tape and the layer that you placed down before it. Once this was done, I then worked on the trimming that went around the outside of this chainsaw. I dry brushed a lot of the sharper pieces around the chainsaw. I then felt like I wanted this thing to be a little bit more gory. It's not my usual kind of thing, but I felt like this guy's got a chainsaw. He's got to have a bit of blood. So what I used was a brush and I used my airbrush to blow the paint off the brush. Once I'd got a good fine mist of it, I then just smacked my brush around all over it just to create a little bit more texture. And that's where I called this model done. Hopefully you managed to take something out of this video and previous videos that I've made on painting the Imperial Knights homages the robot things. Of course, if you have, make sure to leave some words down in the bottom for Uncle Algorithm. This is the time I'd like to say a super special thank you to the Patreons for keeping these lights blind in my eyeballs. And we got another new Patreon this week who I'd like to thank right now. And that is Dave Redhead. I'm extremely tired now. I'm gonna go cut this video into little bite-sized chunks so that it actually makes some sort of a sense. And once I've done that, I'll upload it and you get to watch it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. If you didn't like anything you saw, the best thing I can say is just f off. I'm out. Now what the heck am I supposed to do with these robot men? I don't even know where I'm gonna put them.